Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Dota Star Ladder Season 12 LAN Final Action. We got Team Tinker taking on Cloud9 in a best of three elimination series, what you may call the lower bracket semifinals. We just witnessed in game number one, Cloud9 take over Team Tinker with a swarm of an army from Necrobooks and Fatas. Crazy Beast Master, Eternal Envy and his Lycanthrope, Misery seg it all up with a nice little ice blast, and of course, Mr. Big Tail No Daddy, he dropped down the egg, and well, it was a beautiful Five thing to witness, but hey, Team Tinker, they put up one hell of a fight, and they gotta keep on fighting if they wanna stay alive here, because it's elimination point for them, Cloud9 just need one simple win here to move on forward, we'll see if that's gonna happen or not. I'm Kyle Guy here for Beyond the Summit, bringing you the English coverage. I'm joined again remotely here from my good buddy, Mr. Ryu Boris. Buddy, we have almost done it. We have been trucking on on this channel for near nine hours now. And this could very well be the last match we have to cast here at Star Ladder. After this, we're done. Everything is handled on the main stage. We could sit back, relax, and maybe even shower. How does that sound? Are you offering to shower with me right nope. now? No, what absolutely is going not. On? What is no, going? please. All right, good, good, good. I am. I. I don't. I don't know what you're thinking, man. But yeah, I was just kidding there. Uh, this is going to be a one good game, and it's been a pleasure casting with you all day. It's definitely getting a little bit tiring, but uh, I'm. I'm still here. I'm still a little bit alive. I'm at probably one percent brain capacity. That's good enough. <laughs> maybe. Maybe less. Yeah, I think it's enough. It's definitely enough for casting right now. Just, just so. shake it off. Slap yourself in the face. Do what you got to do. Stand up. Throw up those hairs. Hallelujah. We're ready for more Dota action. I am amped Hello. up. I've got my third wind, I think, now. So, let's do you it. Say, I got your thumb. You I got, got your thumb, thumb for this? in my thumbs ear. I don't, I don't, do yeah, my thumbs are up, down, we whatever. Up. We're ready to yeah. go. Ten okay, seconds. so I think they, they're, they're switching things up. It's now going to be Team Tinker who take the reins Five of the Beastmaster, and Cloud9 are going to be the team to get up this Night Stalker. Now, they're not going to be blessed with the opportunity to pair it up with Fata's godlike Zeus, but they will follow it up with a Skywrath Mage. This does mean that pesky little troll Warlord is still out there. We'll have to see which team want to kind of take the chance to pick it up first and foremost. So we'll see as we move on forward. Um, Beastmaster. That's pretty good. Especially with Beastmaster. Yeah. I mean, you could run Beastmaster as support. You can run Beastmaster as a core mid. We've seen it. It definitely worked out last game. Even though he got shut down heavily by Black, he, he Fada was definitely having a hard time keeping up with CS. Mm -hmm. He was probably behind by 20 at one point, probably at like 10 minutes in the game, but still it doesn't matter. As long as his team eventually came and ganked, and they shut down the sniper eventually, mm -hmm. so they he did his job. He didn't feed too much. He got he only died one time in the first ten minutes, so it was a really good job from him. And well, 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 well. we're not going to be seeing your your silly troll, your silly sniper, because obviously that was banned. But Chin now being on the field, it's just a. Uh, way twos here right yep so he should be so he should be doing a lot of work in this game we've seen him rotate a lot of times into the enemy jungle trying to take over i mean they have a lot of pressure this this could be another army game man yeah what's with the armies they got, coming they got a nice little potential uh a creep summon build up already just between the two of them can't help but feel like though that they they led in with this beastmaster grab as more of a deny pick i mean as i look through the history here of team tinker Unless I'm blind as hell from the last, I don't think they ever you know, played Chen. Yeah, from a like, little, no, yeah. they played Chen occasionally. It's Beastmaster I'm concerned about. The last 11 days they haven't really repped it, so I feel like they just kind of got it to make sure Fata doesn't have the luxury of getting one of the two big powerhouses he likes to go for. So he's gonna have to reach elsewhere for for a big grab. And yeah, you know Chen, they they pulled out time and time again. They put it together with like a Shadow Fiend occasionally. They get their Lion, you know, Bulba. Still occasionally will pick up probably his Clockwork from here on after. Uh, imagine they really build up a swarm of an army and get Bulba something like a Broodmother, you know, as well. Uh, we'll have to see. You know, Cloud Knight's got, I think, the best hero against this right now is it could be a Tide Hunter, right? Tidehunter is good for the initial... Th this is one of the games where I could see the resurgence of the hero. Tidehunter is great against the roar from Beastmaster. You can always get out of it uh, because of that Kraken show and always get off the ulti. And it's really good for having this anchor smash and all these creeps to clear him out. 
as well as the Ravage, which is a good insurance in most of these team fight. And the biggest problem last game was the, the the wave clear for me, right? Because they had these massive summons, they had a Venge, they had a clock, they had a Night Stalker. The, these heroes can't even they can't even clear out like one free. They're, they're probably gonna pick Phoenix just because Cloud Nine freaking love the hell out of Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix is just like riddled nope. all over the place. Of this, but they, you know they want to get fought to something he's dominant with. If you can't get Zeus, you can't get Beastmaster, Magnus. You know, he's right oh, yeah. there. If they don't get Troll here, I would be very surprised if Cloud9 don't take it thereafter. Troll Magnus combo. I mean, come Troll. on, Lord yeah. have mercy, right? <laughs> My God. Yeah, and it's the counter initiation factor too, right? Because now you have the Magnus for the counter roars, and it's a really good hero in this position, and you can. Even if Team Tinkerita pick up the troll, as they I was about it. to say, yeah. that they Cloud still can pick up the juggernaut it. here from Cloud9. You mm. definitely want to have some melee hero um, coupled up with maybe this. maybe, is another option. Sometimes they like to go for in this kind of mag duo, but Jug seems to, like you said, be the, the one as a good option. Get Alchemist, Kappa? No. Oh, man. What happened to that, that guy? That hero is so dead. Yeah. That hero is dead. Ice Frog, he's I mean, going to have to give him CPR. He's going to buff him, though. Oh, yeah. He'll do something. He's going to give him life. I predict it. Maybe 50 gold uh, a creep extra. I don't know. I mean, that's <laughs> no. pretty crazy. <laughs> that would, that it, would they'll be have to. Damn. They'll have to do something. That, that hero is definitely yeah. gone. But I like the call. To, it's, it's another possible takeaway pick from Cloud9. You know, they grab Beastmaster for themselves, something they don't seem to play a lot as of recent, just to make sure Fata doesn't get it. Oh, and then sugar. when it seems very prominent that... You know, a troll warlord is an intimate, or an intimate. I'm not even gonna try with that word. A, a, a desired grab for Cloud Nine. They again take that away from them and, and probably grab it for themselves, which is a troll. They, they could squeeze a troll into whatever lineup they want. Uh, that could work out pretty well. Uh, so for now, Cloud Nine they hold off on the Eternal Envy grab, which could still be that jug. And for now, they grab up the the Earthshaker, which is which is great. Works good against the huge summon army that Beastmaster and Chen will have. So there's really no reason why you really want to pass on an Five opportunity like that. Remaining. Plus, you got huge wombo combo factor. I mean, this is a Dota highlight reel in Reserve the making time. between your Magnus, uh, Fata Magnus, and now this Earthshaker. Oh, yeah. And on the other side, Team Tinkerino, man, they had this aura strategy and this... This is just looking very scary. You have the, I mean, all these heroes feel like they're going to be attacking at max attack speed or something. You got Troll Warlord with a fervor. You got the inner beast coming out from Beastmaster. Now you're going to be coupling it up with the Storm Spirit, which, honestly, Storm Spirit this game isn't too bad if you go a Yule Scepter, but I've seen this before. I've seen this same scenario where a Storm Spirit goes a Yule Scepter first. Mm -hmm. And there's two silences on the other team. You have the Skywrath Mage as well as the Night Soccer. And I've seen it just be countered just because they have two instead of one. Ha ha. No, but well, well, I don't know. If he gets something I don't know. to offer that secondary silence. But yeah, there is actually also the silence, of course, from the Night Stalker, too. So Storm yeah. seems like a prominent grab, but I mean, I I'm with you on that. I don't know. You know, you got to get that defensive Yules so, so that when you make that committed jump in, you're not welcomed from that Ancient Seal or from the Night Stalker silence. So it, it could be very scary. Maybe even have to really step out of bounds to get a BKB, which you don't want to have to do when you're a Storm Spirit. Yeah. You don't want to have to do that. You want to beat ass. Especially when you're against uh, Earthshaker too, right? Yeah. This is very scary. It, you don't even need to have a silence sometimes as long as you can time the Earthshaker Fissure some, sometimes. Really? And... Well, let's be looking at the last two picks here. Jug, Dakota, maybe. Cloud we're, Nine. We're baking on the jug. That's the only hero. That's the only hero I can see. Like you said, Slark is okay, but I don't think it's a good enough to really. I mean, it's good for dodging the Beastmaster roar. Sometimes you can. Uh, it's really hard to man fight against a troll with Slark. Sometimes though, if you have that mischance on you. Yeah. Hmm. Not too. I think Savin's not too bad, right? Oh, it could be a really good hero. Manly as hell, but I just don't see why you would take something like that when you can get the jug. Oh, okay, really, on. no real surprise there. It's it's the jug. It's too obvious. It was yeah. too obvious for us. Okay, well, I try to this one's not as obvious here for Team Tinker, though. Right, right. The secondary support here. We need mm -hmm. the Pile I Die hero. Vengeful Spirit, you know, he, he reached for in the last game. Uh, Witch Doctor could be possibly an option as well. 
Um, Lion has Tree's been not banned too bad. now. Tree isn't uh, too bad. I haven't seen him personally play Tree a whole remaining. lot. Um, outside of that, though, yeah, I think just Witch Doctor is or the remaining. Vengeful Spirit has nope. it. So, yep. yeah. Okay. Just massive aura strategy, survivable. Mm -hmm. The survivability of, from the swap. It didn't do too much last game, though, because they were able to really run them down with all the blink daggers coming in with the Phoenix and Beastmaster. But this time around, what do they have? They have Night Stalker running at you, Earthshaker with his Fissure, Magnus with his blink dagger. It's it's a little bit scary, but not as scary as last game. So I, I think Vengeful Spirit will work a little bit better in this game. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see if that's the case, but you can't help but feel like that dominant double powerhouse force of your Magnus RP with Empower on your Jug so he could just kind of slice them and dice them while they're locked and submitted in position. Plus, you, you put on top of that a Mystic Flare, maybe an Echo Ten Slam. Things could get ugly real fast here. And for Team Tinker, Five they kind of put together this remaining. lineup that kind of almost counteracts Cloud9 on what they initially might have wanted to do. We'll have to see if they can really make it work because they're going to be playing it a bit different here. You can already see, you know, Bulba is going to be taking reign of your Beastmaster and going to the off lane, you know, like we used to see more often. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get this party started. This is game two action of a best of three where Cloud9 are already up one game. They got the victory there in game number one, and they have match point where Team Tinker are going to be fighting for the tournament life here and now. I'll go ahead and start off the introductions here for your Team Tinker squad on your dire side. We got none other than Mr. Black himself. He's going to be playing your Troll Warlord. We got Quakeva on the Storm Spirit. Pink Panda, also known as Way Too Sexy. He's going to be playing your Chen. Pili Die, going to be playing your Vengeful Spirit. And that will leave Flo, also known as Bulba. He's going to be playing your Offlane Beastmaster. And we've got for Cloud9, Fada handling his famous Magnus. He's a very good hero. Very good player on it. And we've got No Tail playing the Night Stalker here. Bone 7, Earthshaker. Musri or Misri playing the Scarius Mage. And Ferin, EE, Sama, please save us. Please save me from casting three games. No, I'm just kidding. I want Team Tinker to win this. I definitely can see this going to a game three, but Cloud9 definitely have a lot of aggression they can pull out in. <laughs> yeah, the Team Tinker not going to be getting any runes, so uh, that's that, already GG, right? That, yep, that, that is game. Cloud9 have won, so get ready for game three action. But no, they're they're off to a pretty nice start, getting that huge bounty bonus, 100 extra gold, 100 extra XP for those grabbers, and it looks like you know. Firin is going to be one of them. I don't know. I assume that's probably from an anime. I, I don't know which one, if it is one or not. But regardless, EE -E will uh, kind of hold his own down here with Misery by his side going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bulba. And this could be a bit of an awkward matchup for him. It might not stop him from getting bullied here. Misery has come packing three clarities. He's just going to start dishing out some serious arcane bolt hate. But he does have the board to help him out with the right click, and he can get a little bit of that harassment back towards Misery. But, you know, just expect him to start chewing through these tangos pretty early. Yep. And this is going to be the Battle of Force here. And no, no Tail's just going to be roaming around here, causing a lot of havoc for Pilot Dice. So we're going to be seeing dual lane action on top, dual melees here. Just Bone 7 going to be able to get a lot. He started off with a Stout Shield and a Poor Mensch, uh, and a Ring of Protection here. I normally don't see this too much. And how's mid lane looking? It's pretty Fada. interesting to up, but yeah, okay. So we got Fada the Magnus. He's got six and OCS going against Quick for right now at seven and two. You know, he'll be able to kind of have his way for now with Quick for on his star spirit. But you know, as we already pointed out in the draft later on, things could get a bit interesting for your storm spirit. You could be potentially risk jumping into a quick fissure, a silence there from your Night Stalker and your Skyrath Mage and well top lane. They get off a nice bit of harassment here on the pile I die with that fissure and void combo, but he will be able to walk away from a bit of trouble. Thankful to have those boots to save him a bit. And all the meanwhile, Way2 continues to do work in the jungle. His jungle has not been contested this game. No wards to block anything out. He has the full jungle to work with if he wants to blitz on forward and try to get an immediate mechanism, let's say. We'll have to see if that does opt to be the choice for him because he doesn't have a smoke early on. And, well, Flo, who uh, doesn't want to risk getting caught out, keeps himself back to the tower before he can get pincered and flanked. 
Yeah, and with Fada picking up this Invis rune top, definitely hurting out on the mid lane control here. Only 9 CS to 14 and 6. Koifu doing a really good job here of uh, bullying Fada. And this is what a Storm Spirit can do, especially, oh, Night Stalker. Was denied by neutral creeps. I mean, I was... assume he wanted to go back to base. Yeah. yeah. I, they had they did it the last game too. Him and misery. You yeah. know, I was like, wait, wait, what happened? I mean, no one was really near him. I'm just gonna assume that was a casual deny, uh, deny rather, to go back, pick up his boots, and move on forward, uh, getting the express trip out because he's got about one minute. By the time he gets to lane, it's gonna be about 30 seconds till that first nightfall. Maybe he wants to get something done. We'll have to see. Fata doesn't really make much out of his invisible that he had bottled up, but he is back in action. Whoa, that courier! Careful, buddy. Puts him pretty far forward. Oh, doing doing a wrap around on top lane. They've got the net. Bone doesn't have this Boom. fissure. They got the stun. Bone seven. Oh wait, wait. will go down. It is going to be first blood for Black there in the top lane. Very nicely done. Good execution there from Mr. Way Too Sexy to get that early roaming gank on his chin. And that's what you like to see. You don't want to see the him farming too much here. Let's look at the stacks that he's made. He's made a, a, a good one right here, a triple stack over. Um, and he will be able to farm it. Sadly, there are some mud golems, but he should be looking for a wild wind ripper. He does have one, so he can definitely get the stacks going. Mid lane, looking to go maybe on Koifa. No, they're going to go on pink Panda here. Bone 7 doesn't have enough mana once again. Yeah, attack. he's trying to get what looks like his soul ring, so he'll have the mana ready to go, but he is not really there and ready with a fissure to help out. And as night does come down, Way Too moves in, snags up the rune right behind Big Daddy, who is trying Dyer's to stalk out this mid lane a bit, attack. but now he has changed course. He's looking to head towards the bottom lane here, maybe looking to come in through the back door and catch out Bulba. We'll see if he's successful or not. EE has just put himself between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower, clearing out the wave here. Putting Bulba in a bit of a precarious spot right now. Watch this crit. If he crits, I saw it last time. If he crits, the boy is definitely dead from from uh, full HP. So it's kind of funny just watching it. As you're saying, they still have the slow from long range too. Look at that concussive oh, mid lane, shot range. Though, no they tail. get the kill. We see the back end of it as they take down Fata. Big Daddy rotates away from that bottom lane. Now he moves on forward. Pilot Eye just kind of still standing there, eats the void damage. He's going to eat some right clicks. Can they stop him in time? They can't. Can they at least take him down in exchange? He turns He's back. He around. might get quick, but he got oh him. Goodness. A double kill for Big Daddy makes it well worth it. What a beautiful <laughs> play from him. Ooh, and they got Bulba. Gaming. They got Bulba on the bottom lane as well. And the tower. And the tower. What the hell happened? Cloud9 just suddenly get everything going for him across the board. Unbelievable. It, it's it's the daddy factor, man. No tail. Definitely stepping up. His game here, the first night time, is it's a, a great yep. success, mm -hmm. I would say. Getting a kill on the Storm Spirit. Yes. And that got him his urn now. He's going to be able to work with that. He has the level silence already. Level 4. Not too shabby here. Koifa has to be careful. He can be RP'd and skewered back. Oh, oh there can it is. he? Here yes, he can. He sure can. Oh, he got oh, RP'd, oh. skewered back, right on Q <laughs> Ryu. <laughs> Koifa goes down. Oh, man. Unfortunate for him. He even had his level 6 and everything, but he is just put in a hurt locker right there. Unbelievable. <laughs> right on Q. I don't think every, I don't think uh, people are ever gonna live down this fact that I called him no daddy. There, there's no coming back, Dakota. There's no well, coming back. He's got a back. big tail, so it works out, I guess. Yeah, he's got a big tail, man. <laughs> oh, but well, Boba did pick up that Invisrin, so he's gonna be getting his levels down here. This is pretty nice for him. I mean, we just seen how useless his boar is in lane. He can't do anything. It just gets one shot by Eternal Envy. I'll have to uh, remember if I ever go against a beast master, just pick the the crit master. Pick the jug. Yeah, we don't see that very often in your pub. That'll be something oh, yeah. very new. But... It's not going to be there much longer though. So. Who the hell's going to play beast master in a pub anyways? But Some one of those nerd. few heroes like Chen, like Wisp that you usually only see in your more competitive style games, but Team Tinker looking to make it work. Things are evened up though. 4 to 4 here. Fata makes his return back to mid lane. Maybe sharing a bit of bottle action there with Big Daddy. They plant down the ward. It is immediately spotted out right there. 
Looks like Pilot Eye had the idea. They have their own ward to scout it out. So they know that they have their own bit of high ground vision. And they need to keep tabs. They see Big Daddy looking to turn the corner. Do they go right for him, though? Quickfa not kind of giving them the early impression that they have a clue as far as what's going on. And it looks like they'll kind of step back instead. Yep. And Magnus RP coming up here really soon, 10 seconds. And meanwhile, there's going to be put pressure on the top lane here. We've got the troll. We've got the alpha wolf definitely helping bring in the damage. Look at the troll's damage, man. That's up at, uh, whoo, at level 8 minutes in, 140 damage. That's, that's pretty insane right now. Top lane, double rotation. Daddy moves forward, gets the void, takes He's out one creep. He's got an echo creep. slam. Okay. Oh, that's a block. That army oh, no. is going to be gone for, except there is going to be the hand of God to follow up. Your mid dark lane. troll will make it alive, but mid lane. He spins TP away. Eternal Envy. Just kind of flirting a bit with him. No follow through commitment quite yet. Koikova eating a little bit of damage here. They're trying to dance with Fata, but he's got that RP as he does flex it there. Got to be cautious of that one. But they're pretty hesitant, at least for now. So he conceals the truck on forward. He does have a TP. Now that the lane's pushed on forward, he could make a rotation to this top lane and get it on the action if he wants to. But for now, at least, Black and Pink Panda trying to finish off the tower. They see the rotations. They got to get the hell back and away. And it looks like they will make it out. It is going to be denied, though. Bone 7 takes that bit of gold back and away. Meanwhile, Bulba gets his own bit of solo farm here on the bottom. I say that, but here comes Eternal Envy with an Omni Slash. Can he scout him in time? Oh, nope. Oh. He's going to make it away. Fada, man. Nine-minute Blink Dagger, and he's 0-1-1. Pretty good. I mean, this is this is a very nice time, Pretty Blink Dagger. Good. Do they have do they have a... Or is he going to buy a smoke? He doesn't have enough for even a TP. Oh, there it is on the ground. Very nice team. Good team. Give me TP. Give me TP. Give me smoke. I'll give you two smokes. Oh, oh two smokes. Yep. And there's one. There, yep. Yeah, two smokes. Not one smoke, but two. One fish, blue fish, red fish, green fish, whatever. All right. Mid lane, though. They can put out the pressure. What level oh. is Pylite or Misery? Oh, Big top lane. Yeah, he moved up top okay. and TP'd away. <laughs> and yeah. they, well, he All wants right, to get comes... in on that smoke action. There we go. Oh, yeah. Here they pressure come. coming in. Looking for that big blink RP mid lane. Mm, so succulent, so delicious maybe. Do we want the Bulba? They're thinking about it. Oh, but he is very behind this tower. He is not looking to get caught out quite yet. Wants to maybe scout out, but they're coming around the bend. This is a lot of hate towards Bulba. They got four committed. They make their committed dive. They might be able to get him without using the RP. They do. Easy kill. That TP is going to have to be canceled. Just quick execution right there from Cloud9. Isolating the, the Beastmaster. And he is not going to be able to even... Oh, he's not even level 6 yet. I was going to say be able to get off the Primal Roar. He doesn't even have it. And now they will glyph up the tower. But it looks like Cloud9 they are not going to be walking away until they get their prize. Well, here comes the army that we were talking about. Does Bolt 7 have his Echo? Yeah, he does. And fought it with RP, but he doesn't have that much mana. He has enough 200 plus the skewer is 280, so he has it just enough. Wave of Terror going to be canceling his Blink Dagger right there, but... Oh, they still going to get the tower. Nice little heal, so he doesn't take in all that extra bit of gold from the army. But they, yeah, get, they get the tower, and they will walk away. And that means it's going to be their second Tier 1 tower drop, removing both of these big access points, we like to call them, so that Cloud9 can be in a much more comfortable position to possibly do Roche themselves. But as I say, that Team Tinker have their own pretty hardy Roche lineup. You got Pilot Eye with the wave, as shown right there. They got the Way 2 army, and of course, none other than Troll himself. So they begin to move in there and get it started. And it looks like Cloud9 are not going to be onto it quite yet. Somewhat pinging it here. Aha, yeah, this is Lord. a pretty good timing. This is a really good timing, right? That is that is Chen with your mechanism. Hand of God is on cooldown. They left the Aegis there. there, there. It would have been funny if somebody was invis, but none of those shenanigans are going to be happening. And that was all during not nighttime, as I was about to mention. It is the nighttime. This is the second one. We'll see how much pressure they can put on now. And, well, it's, it's kind of like counteracting, right, in my mind. You have the Aegis, Aegis online now, but you also have the Night Stalker with Night. So 
definitely Team Tinker are going to be using their advantage with the Aegis to push, but can they make some counter plays happen while it's while it's up? I don't know. We'll see. For now, they're going to use that bit of an advantage, and while they kind of have everyone together, they go towards the bottom. They want to take their next tower here in this Tier 1 to the south. And for Koikva, he is going to look to scout out what's happening from behind. They smoke up. They got their little skeleton friend to lead out the charge. And now they move in. They could see EE here. He's got a ward up to, to see what's going on. Smoke gets popped, and he's got to get out of there. He's gone. They're not going to be able to get the jug. And they continue their push instead here towards Radiant's the bottom. bottom Fata in position with an invis. Wants to get off an RP. Does connect on the black. Brings him right back towards Misery. No Mystic Flare yet, though. They want to save it. Will they get the silence instead? Omni Slash flies through everyone. And they send Black back to base. Very nicely done there from Way2, but he might pay for his own life, and he will. He goes down. They save their troll. They're trying to save the centaurs. No! No! God! He's dead. Okay, so easy kill there for Fata to follow it up. Ends up just being the one Chen takedown. They don't lose their Aegis. They don't have to commit their Aegis or anything like that. Yep. That's not too bad. And Bone7, if he had his Blink Dagger, he was desperately trying to farm a top. He only had 2,100 gold. But now that that's online, he still needs to have... Well, he did max Aftershock. So he does have the duration. He can perma stun people now. It will not be a level two echo, but still. Nicely timed blink dagger coming out. So they have two blinks on their side, some great initiation. And uh, yeah, they can definitely take these team fights, I think. Especially now, they really need Black to have a BKB in. He has 2,000 gold saved up. I wonder if he's gonna go for it or if he's gonna go the standard Sage and Yasha here. Long jump from Quake for trying to get a hold of Big Daddy, but it's just a little too far at this point. And he needs to save a little bit of mana to put it to use. Quakepa is going for the Oblivion Staff into the Orchid, it looks like, first and foremost here. Not stopping off for any sort of defensive Yules along the way. Does put him a bit of in a risky position, uh, but we'll see. As they could go on to Black. Oh, jump in Echo with the help of the bird. They take him down immediately. And now the follow through comes out from Bulba. He does get the primal roar, but they can't get anything done with it. Way too is going to be just slashed apart from both the Turtle Envy and Big Daddy. And they quickly lose two. Nice start out there for Bone Seven. Leads in with the Echo Slam. Black will go down. Cloud Nine push ahead. Nice fissure. Connects on Bulba. He is on the run. Can he make it away though from trouble? Big Daddy's got the void. Uh, uh, got him. All right, we'll be able to slow him down. Who's gonna like, get the Please last deny hit. me! Oh! oh Duke! It was almost a shot enough. Win. Yeah. <laughs> he tried. That was pretty funny. Not happening, though. Pile I die. He is stuck in a corner here without a TP. So he's gonna have to wait a little bit before he can make a safe safe path out. And all your meanwhile way too back working in the jungle. They're gonna be able to clear out that tier one top lane very easily. And Cloud9 just in a very good standing at this point. Pushing ahead yeah, now. You just saw how quickly Black melted without having a uh, Black King bar. So it's really interesting to see him go for this build, knowing how I think they're very far behind. And as you can see from that last team fight, they definitely, that was a 2,000 gold swing, it feels like. And, you know, it's pretty funny watching Big Daddy um, uh, trying to farm up this. He's got Empower on, too. I mean, <laughs> once he gets his eggs up, this is going to be very scary for Team Tinker. It's not too far. I mean, it's, it's like 3,000 gold away, but at this rate that Cloud9 have been playing, he's going to get it in no time. So. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be too crazy if he wants to stop off for maybe a Midas along the way, but no, he, he gets the point booster. He'll just... He ain't about that greed. Yeah, he ain't about that. He ain't he they feel like they're in, good, in a good spot. They don't need to worry about taking it too long, I guess. So he'll get the point booster for now. They're smoked up. They're waiting. They got Fata about to run out with an RP. We'll see if he can pull out a big uh, Hail Mary of an RP here or not. Koikva's got to play a little bit a little bit safe. He's got a regen rune. A fantastic rune. He's just rune. gone. They have vision of him oh. right here. Hello, how's it going? Fissure on to two. Koikva's dead with a silence and an Omni Slash. And now they just go right to work on a tier two a little bit. Quick, quick execution right there from Cloud9. Beautifully done. Don't really need to do a whole lot about it. Quickfoot is going to be out on the sidelines for 30 seconds more. 
And with that, they should be able to take down this tier two tower. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah. And okay. with the five second window of their nice timing from the smoke from Dyer's Cloud9, they will be, where are they gonna be going? Just gonna cut off the supplies. Oh, the trend peeps. Give me them. Give me oh, them all. Ah, so much hate. That's two. No, oh, no. Uh, That's three. <laughs> Bottom lane, Fada's here. He sees black. All right, do they have the... Boom. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, it's off oh, target. Oh, no. They don't get the Mystic Flare. Black is like, I'm gonna try to get the hell out of there. But Big Daddy's like, no, you are not, sir. I got a void here for you. And they'll take black down. Their efforts will pay off. It does cost a couple of rotations here, but the Troll Warlord will be put into the ground once more. And EE -E versus, nope, not versus Bulba. He hides in the trees, trying to hide away. I mean, we haven't seen the effect of this Beastmaster at all this game. It hasn't done anything. I don't even think we've seen it roar. Have we seen a roar on anyone? Honestly. It, it hasn't. I mean, this is the thing. Like, you know, I said they picked up this Beastmaster, but I can't but feel like they're like, we'll just take the Beastmaster so that Fata doesn't get it, and we'll just put right. it to use. And as I look through their history, unless they've been putting it in work in scrim play, they are probably rusty with the hero because in the last two weeks, they have not run it at all. And it just kind of shows. So with that, they, they are going to hope to try to dig deep and have this Beastmaster be a factor. And he will be able to ball up a, a double damage rune here. But it has been Team Tinker on the defensive for the most part, just trying to get some farm up on their troll. But now you see, look at this, even Bone 7 gets a Yule's complete. And at that same moment, Turtle Envy, he's got his Manta done. And with that, there goes the Orchid from Koifa that you've been working so hard on. He just picks it up now, and I agree with getting an Orchid, but I don't know if I would have got it this game. You always want to have an attack speed item on Storm Spirit, and oh my goodness. A lot of hate on the Bulba there on the bottom. That was yep. set up with Fata and the Yules, a skewer back. He tries to go for the TP, but Eternal Envy just easily slashes him down, and then of course is secured. Fissure even flying in from Bone 7, just the Bash Brothers here of Cloud9 just going from spot to spot, clearing out a pick off while they can. Oh, Echo and Aquifa, here comes the dog from oh, Bone man. 7. The solo pick off, I unfortunately don't really get to catch it as I saw them go instead for this tier two on the bottom lane. Aquifa is out. May have his Orchid, but he has not been able to utilize it, not been able to make jump in plays, not be able to get anyone off. And instead he's the one that gets caught out again. And with what that, if I hunt for that too. and reverse for polarity still up for Fata. They're even going to go hunt the troll by themselves. Oh, no. Nope. And he's going to. They're coming back. So. Yeah, they get the tier three down, it looks like. They walk away. And with that, you know, Cloud9, they're, they're still very good. And as you said, they still even have that RP to work with here if they want. Roche is up. They could even take it for themselves if they decide to. They got a nice little ward down up here to see any sort of movement to come in from Team Tinker, and they will go in for the Roche. This has to be all in. Koifa has to do something amazing here, else this game is over. It's all on his shoulders to really steal this, make some big plays happen. They have, they only have Beastmaster Roar to lock anybody down, it feels like. Oh my goodness. But the one good thing is Bone Seven's ulti is on cooldown. That is might be a big factor in this. Oh, oh they're no, getting this is on. trouble. Oh, almost blew out the RP at the top high ground. Now we'll make it in. There's the RP Mystic Flare. Hand to God to come out to try to help out, but Black is already dead. Now they skewer on back in. Pilot I could be in trouble. Will be in trouble. He goes down. Pull back from Koifa. Might be able to get misery. We'll get him. Tries to jump and get away here from Eternal Envy as him and Bone Seven tried to get a hold of him. Fissure will be too far in away. Meanwhile, Fata on the hunt. Making it go for way two here. There's going to be the Yules. Can skewer him back. Nope. We'll hold it back. He needs about eight more seconds before it's even up and ready. But okay, he brings in the army, but it's just too late Bring to help himself out. Die. Yeah, he brings him in for free extra gold here for Cloud9. They just easily feed on him. I don't know, man. This game not looking as close as game number one. It is looking like Cloud9 all the way as they push into a 12k net worth advantage, 10k on the XP front. 
and they will just go back to finish out their precious little Roche. Yeah, I, I just think that Team Tinker didn't really give enough respect to the AOE of Cloud9. A lot of their is a lot of their damage is single target. Right now, Vengeful Spirit, Stun, even the Swab Beastmaster with the Primer War, Storm Spirit, Zipping Around. I mean, all of these are really single target uh, base damages. And then when Fada gets off these RPs, Bone 7 gets a lot of space just to farm up. I mean, they have nothing to really counteract these heroes right now. And just the team fight coming in from, from Cloud9, you just have to have Bulba getting amazing... Like, the only thing that can come back is amazing Primer War onto Fata. And... Earthshaker not being in the fight or something. That is, well, a, a, a slim chance. It's looking like at this point, as Tinker. Boyfo, they they've got a ward here. Back. He can get dunked again. Yeah, he's got to be careful, man. They, they need BKBs, too. That, yeah. that is a, another key thing that I was talking about. Black needed his. Boyfo needs his. I mean, if they could have stalled a little bit longer to where it was maybe like seven more minutes into the game. If they can do so, then they'll have these BKBs, hopefully. Unless they have to spin on the buybacks. That's another way for them to come back up in this, but still, RP does go through it. And I feel like Fada, what is he going? He looks like he's going for the the Lincoln Sphere. So the Primal War is... No, no, no. I think it's going to be Lincoln Sphere, man. I think the it's going to be Refresher. All right, let's do this. All, All right. right. Uh, it isn't a lot of mana if you wanted to kind of dish it out, but we'll see. You, you could be right. I, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Thank you. Not many people do, but here we go. Cloud9 and power being handed out. The boxing gloves, if you will, to the Cloud9 squad. As they hunt towards the bottom. Wait who's going to get a quick deny. And see you later. That's no haste room for you, fool. Makes it back and away. Brings the army with him. Fought to... A little too late to get there to help out. Meanwhile, mid lane, Bone 7. Got to get slowed down a bit here from the boar. As he dishes out the fissure. But I think it looks like they will just kind of back away for now. They still do hold that Aegis. And it looks like uh, they will... bottom lane. They still have the Orchid for Fata. Um, uh -oh. There comes... Oh, 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 fissure. Oh. Fata, he's going to get healed up with the urn. And he gets the turnaround kill. Oh, that is just... That is a hit to the morale right now for Team Tinker, specifically Koikfa, who just looked like he finally might have had an opportunity to get a, a pickoff for himself, but it just doesn't seem to come easy at all. And look at this, Pylai die. Oh god, no, please! Manta comes in. Eternal so is slow. just going to easily chop slow him by down images. bit by bit. It is a slow and painful death. But he is done. Man, that has got to be the most unfortunate death in, in this game so far. You can't even get it the pick off on Fada when you played it perfectly from Koifa. Oh my goodness, that's no luck. No luck coming their way. Give me these creeps. He just annihilates them. Jumps in, commits with an Omni Slash, which does oh insane damage on the Black. Please. He is dead. Doesn't even get to participate in any sort of defense. They're all dead. That was a 1v3. That was he Eternal just Envy just beat beating beat. his chest like, come on! He just jumps past everyone he's and king. just cleans no, him he's up! Refresher. Okay, he went Refresher because they already won the game. I'm blaming that. I win! Anyways, they get the mid center racks. This could RP be the beginning of the end here. Yep. Oh, man. Koikfa jumps back, but the Raxes are going down, and it is looking like Team Tinker will fall with them out of Star Ladder as Cloud9 begin to clean house. They will continue on the lower bracket and they will face the loser of IG and Vici Gaming in hopes of maybe getting back towards that second place mark or maybe, just maybe, Cloud9 will get their first place they've been waiting so long for. But Ryu, interesting series here for Cloud9 and Team Tinker. Game one pretty dang close, but game yeah. two, it, it's no question. It's cloud yep. nine. Can't spell one v three without ee, -E, man. Six zero oh, and six definitely uh, brought brought his a game during this one, and it just goes to show you the juggernaut plus the Magnus. What a powerful combination! And it just felt like Team Tinker didn't get enough going in the, the early game. They really need to get the fa they got a fast Roshan. They put it on Koifa, but they didn't do anything with it, and they didn't apply enough pressure. It felt like and. 
I mean, Cloud9's rotations definitely were superior. Uh, Big Daddy, I mean, that play in middle lane probably hurt them for the long run once he turned it around onto onto the Storm Spirit with that magic wand. That was a very sick highlight. Mm -hmm. A really good play from him. And, yeah, once again, just Cloud9 demonstrating that they are the better team today. Yep. And, well, we got to give props. Team Tinker, even though their journey at Star Ladder will end, they put up a pretty good showing. They got stuck against Cloud9 in the opener, but they were able to bring down London Conspiracy 2-0, and then they did also take Team Malaysia thereafter. Unfortunately, Cloud9 matches up with them again, and they just don't seem to have an answer for this Cloud9 squad. Now Cloud9, after battling through, you know, on their way past Tinker, getting knocked down from Vici Gaming, they best alliance. Now they beat out Team Tinker, and they will await for the winner of Vici Gaming, or sorry, they will wait for the loser of Vici Gaming and Invictus Gaming. That series is actually going on right now. It is a Game 3 hype-up match. Catch it right now live at twitch.tv slash Dota Star Ladder underscore EN. But, folks, this channel is all done and wrapped up. We have been able to participate and help out with the matches happening simultaneously here from my little remote New York City studio, and it has been a very exhausting the best day. best studio. We best studio. woke up at 5 a.m. this morning. It's almost 5 p.m. now. And I am just happy to be all said and done. It was a pleasure and a joy to cast all this Dota for you. And Ryu Boras, thank you so much. I asked I asked a lot of people to co-cast with me, mind you. Many people didn't even respond. I'm, I'm happy to admit that. But Ryu Boras was right there to help me out, and he stuck with me the whole way through. So thank you so much, my friend. If you guys want to also show him a little bit of love and support, hit him up on his Twitter, at Ryu Boras Dota, myself at Coddle Guy. I'm putting up all the, via, uh, all the VODs personally, right after this, these games conclude, so you can check out any matches you might have missed over on the Beyond the Summit YouTube. But we're all done. I'll throw it over to a little bit of music and some jams, but get over right now to Dota Star Ladder underscore EN for the rest of the Star Ladder action. Tomorrow, everything's going to happen over there, and we'll see you next time, guys. Later. Peace out, guys. Thanks for watching.